thanks to CuriosityStream, the home of the best documentaries on the internet, and Nebula for sponsoring this video. Climate change meme review. Hey everyone, so I thought I'd try something a little different today. I put a tweet out asking people to send me their best, their spiciest climate change related memes. And I thought I would, in this video, go through them. And uh, it's like meme peer review. We're gonna have a look at perhaps how accurate some of these memes are and how much they actually reflect the dark humor within me. Okay, let's get into it. How to kiss someone who doesn't support urgent climate action. <laughs> um. I, ooh, do I want to advocate this? <laughs> climb meme change? We're going to see a lot of climb meme change in this video. If you haven't followed them on Instagram, they're like the go-to account. <laughs> do we need urgent action on climate change? 100%. We are in a situation where we're in a pivotal couple of decades and we absolutely need to take action. Do I think that people mid-sex should rip each other's heads off if they don't advocate that action? I'm going to cage my bets here and say no. That's how we're starting. Sure, okay. <laughs> what? This will affect the trout population. Yeah, I think a uh, chicks love style impact probably would. This is kind of interesting though, because it's like representative of how people don't care about an abstract concept like climate change. But if you really like trout, then suddenly, wait a minute, a change in the environmental conditions means they're not going to breed as effectively. I don't get to fish them. I want to do something about this. It's like nimbyism, it, it, not in my backyard. Like the, this kind of thing that like, if it's a general principle, it's not important. Whereas if it's specific to you, something you care about, then it becomes important. <laughs> oh boy, it's so true. The amount of progress we've made has been uneven, let's put it like that. In some parts of the world, we've made some fantastic progress. Like the EU is really leading the charge in terms of like actual meaningful stuff. And the energy transition is definitely happening. But this meme really does convey just how uh, limited the accomplishments so far. That isn't to say that we should give up. The accomplishments so far are significant because we've taken the first steps, but that's all they are. They're the first steps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate this. I hate the plastic straw debate. There's a great figure, I'll have to find it and put it in the video, of people's perception of like their um, how much changing a certain behavior is going to benefit the environment in terms of like carbon impact. And people way overestimate how much not using plastic straws is like, you know, compared not using plastic straws to say like eating meat once less a week or taking one less flight a year. And it's, it's absurd how much people, how much weight people put on the plastic straws thing. Also, this meme definitely nicely like ties into this, this the fact that it is a relatively small number of corporations that are responsible for a huge amount of environmental damage. And interestingly, there was a case when I was in South Korea, people were telling me about a case where uh, instead of lobbying the government to make changes, people just lobbied corporations that the huge ones in Korea, like Samsung or Hyundai, to actually change their procedures. And that was far more effective. So people often talk about like individual change or governmental change, and they often miss the corporate level, which is super, super important. Good meme. <laughs> You could say this about literally anyone. <laughs> literally any, any person in the developed world. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't climate related, but I dig it. This is good. This is this is the, the butterfly effect of the, what is it? A, a butterfly flapping its wings in Central Park causes a typhoon in Japan or, or something like that. Which is, which is a wonderful name for the phenomenon because um, it, the idea communicates that like, you know, tiny perturbations and atmospheric phenomena cause changes, huge changes like further down the line. But also the name uh, was coined because um, the, uh, the Lorentz attractor, which is how we we basically rediscovered chaos theory. The shape that it forms in three-dimensional space it looks like a butterfly's wings uh, because they're they're broad but infinitesimally thin. So it's actually a very clever name and not climate related, but I'll, I'll, I'll pass. We'll let this one pass. <laughs> climate, say it with me, everybody. Climate is not weather. Weather is the short term, climate is the long term. Ah, uh, Americans. It's not just Americans, but mostly Americans. It's always the same people. Have you ever noticed that? Read Merchants of Doubt by Nomi Oreskes and Eric Conway. Gives you an idea of why. <laughs> <laughs> Grow the lawn to provide a space for a vulnerable bee population. I love it. I, I like. I love like. Uh... <laughs> 
Sustain sustainable memes. Can we make this a thing? It's like wholesome memes. We now have sustainable memes. I like that. <laughs> Scientific evidence of global warming. But it's cold outside. Uh, say it with me, everybody. Climate change does not mean everywhere will always be warmer. Some places will get colder. Climate change just means that there is more energy in the Earth's system, and that's going to change how we redistribute energy across the surface of the Earth. That means some areas will get hotter, and on average, places will get hotter. But some places are going to get colder. Not complicated. Actually, is it? Maybe it is. Maybe I'm just saying that because I've studied it for, like, a decade. <laughs> Uh, cracking open a car with the boys. That's so true. It's it's a value system thing, isn't it? Like all of these people on the left, they don't they don't give two f's about the environment. They care about their backyard nimbyism, but like the ice sheet's just like a hypothetical, right? It doesn't exist. That makes me so sad. <laughs> Yes, yes, a thousand times this. Why would consumers do this? You enabled it. You 100% enabled it. Consumers chose to use your product because you offered it at a low price because you didn't account for negative externalities in like the cost be benefit assessment. You did this. <laughs> I've seen this one before. This one is like unaltered. That is the original meme, an actual comic from like a newspaper that's actually funny. A rarity, but it's so true. Think of a high carbon impact as like getting your name tattooed on your forehead. It might be useful in the short term, but oh boy, you're gonna regret that in the long term. <laughs> yeah, think of, think of all of the memes we're gonna lose because of climate change. We might gain some, but is it really worth it? No. Would Zoomers take global warming more seriously if it was called spicy weather? To be fair, Zoomers are not the problem. Boomers are the problem. Team Trees video, anyone? The one where people just comment stuff like, LIES! Posting is not doing. Just, just say, it's like, it's the thoughts and prayers of the environmental world. Nothing! Means nothing! Rising ocean levels threaten Corgi. Spiffing Brit has entered the chat. There is actually an argument to be made here against using something like polar bears, which is like the frequent metaphor for global warming, um, because it's, uh, well, for one thing, polar bears are like abstract, but also it kind of trivializes the problem a little bit. It focuses down on one small aspect of it, which is useful to help humans comprehend it, but it does mean that you can effectively memify it, and it means it makes the problem seem less serious. I like the meme though. Some people have a girlfriend, some people have a boyfriend. I have an overwhelming anxiety about our climate crisis. I'm in this photo and I don't like it. There, there is like serious research done into the mental health impacts of people studying climate change because it's like going to work every day and learning that the world is ending. It's a, it is a genuinely serious thing amongst climate researchers, I think, that you, they just get numb to it. I asked actually a couple of years ago uh, researchers if they were optimists about climate change, and most of them still said they were optimists. But that was the best part of 10 years ago. So I'd be interested to see if that still holds now. <laughs> <laughs> humans mess with climate. Climate messes with humans. How could it? How, how dare it? The climate is like the world's most complicated machine and, and human carbon emissions on the scale we are currently emitting is just throwing hammers and spanners into the world's most complicated machine. Of course, it's gonna spit some cogs at you. What did you think was gonna happen? Don't worry, 2020 will be a great year. Also, I was actually using advanced technique there called lying. <laughs> 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 Zoom in on the fake face, that's so good. That's probably my favorite one. <laughs> There's no complicated point here, that's just a good meme. Remember this guy? This is him now. <laughs> oh, that does make me sad. I could make a point here about like when we expect the Arctic to be ice free sooner than you might think, but that meme actually communicates it very well. Do something about this. These memes are indicating an environmental crisis. We're laughing at memes. There is a serious civilization level threat that we're dealing with here. And of course, because it's 2021, we're making memes about it. If the climate is changing and water rises 10 feet, people will just uh, sell their houses. 
One small problem. <laughs> This is great. Harry, well, I helped out with this video actually. Um, H Bubble Guy, he asked for some advice on certain aspects of it, which is great because I, in some way, like helped make that meme a reality and it is possibly the best climate change related meme. I love it. Because it's true. Ben Shapiro is an example of somebody who basically believes that the market is going to fix everything. It's like a very neoliberal kind of free international trade aspect to it, that the market will find a solution. It doesn't work like that for exactly this reason. Who are people whose houses are flooded? Who are they going to sell their houses to? It's a negative externality that's come home to roost. Good meme. There, I fixed it. No more global warming. It might fix particulate. Uh, you know, it might actually help, like, you know, air quality and maybe reduce, you know, some respiratory illnesses. But uh, no, that doesn't stop the carbon. We are going to have to find a use for all these masks, though, I guess. What other uses do face masks have? We should reduce CO2 emissions. Yet you exhale CO2. Curious. I am very intelligent. This meme. Every time. Every discussion. Change the system from within. I cannot live without emitting CO2, but I limit it as much as possible. All I'm asking is that people do exactly the same thing. It's not an excuse to be like, well, we can't do it like entirely, so what's the point? God, I hate that guy's smug face. I am very intelligent. R slash I am very smart, AKA half of YouTube comments on ScienceTube. And that is the last meme. Oh my God, that was a trip. <laughs> That's the end of the memes I was sent, but I hadn't had enough, so decided to make some climate memes of my own. And you can watch that process over on this video's page on Nebula. Nebula is the educational streaming service I help create along with loads of other creators like Legal Eagle, Medlife Crisis, and Lindsay Ellis. We post our videos there earlier than on YouTube, and they contain extra content. There's also Nebula exclusive content such as Money by Tom Scott, and a cheeky video that I have planned next month that is definitely not safe for YouTube. The crucial thing about Nebula is that it's ad-free. These advertising segments that you see at the end of all YouTube videos these days is cut from the versions on Nebula, and often replaced with additional content, like in this case. Instead, the website runs on a subscription model, with the revenue generated divided up between creators based on how many people watch their videos on the site. We've partnered up with the fantastic documentary service CuriosityStream to offer you a deal. If you're quick and act before the 31st of January, you can get access to CuriosityStream and Nebula for less than a dollar a month. That's over 40% off the annual price to get access to documentaries like Climate A Few Degrees Less, just one of dozens of documentaries on CuriosityStream about climate change, and the section of YouTube you already watch with no adverts, extra content, and supporting independent creators like me. Head on over to curiositystream.com slash Simon Clark, linked in the description, to sign up and take advantage of this great offer. Less than a dollar a month, and it helps out this channel immensely. But be quick. Thanks to CuriosityStream for not just offering the best documentaries on the internet, but for sponsoring this video. Do let me know if you enjoyed this one. Uh, I really enjoyed making it, and if you felt like you maybe learned a couple of things or just enjoyed laughing at the memes and the situation we're in, then let me know, because I'd be very happy to do some more videos like this one. If you did enjoy this video, please do pop it a like and let me know in the comments what you thought if you'd like to see more like this one. And if you're new here, you can also subscribe. That'd be nice. Here's some examples of some more videos that I've made recently. This one is a little different. So um, if, you've, if you're new here and you want to see some more of me, then there you go. There's some suggestions. That just leaves me to say thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Now lower your carbon footprint.